Beach season is almost here, but the News 4 I team found not every beach in our area is open to visitors. At least not all visitors. Mm -hmm. Investigative reporter Tracy Wilkins and the News 4 I team traveled to a small Calvert County town where residents are divided over a policy to keep out of towners off its shore. Tracy? We're talking about a town called Chesapeake Beach, just a half hour's drive away from Prince George's County. At the start of the pandemic, their town council voted to restrict Bayfront Park, which includes Brownies Beach to residents and their guests. Three years later, they voted to extend that policy through 2025. But it wasn't just that decision that has some people upset, but also comments the mayor made about who he's trying to exclude and why. Had it not been for the pandemic, Darnley Hodge and his family may have never taken the time to experience Maryland's many beaches. My wife and I decided that we were going to explore the local parks and beaches, anything with about, within about an hour's drive of our home. From the ocean to the bay, they enjoyed Maryland's sand and sun. My children, they love the beaches. They were delighted by this sign welcoming them to the town of Chesapeake Beach, but were confused by these signs posted at the entrance of its Brownies Beach in Bayfront Park. This park is closed to non-residents of this town. Citing the pandemic, the Calvert County town closed its park and beach to outsiders in June 2020. The following year, they opened it up to the county's first responders, too. Darnley said while he was disappointed, families like his weren't included. We came, we were like, okay, this is, this is a little crazy. It was something the local mayor recently said that had him questioning what it was all really about. I'll, I'll be the voice of Southside now, quote unquote, we don't want them people down here. Mayor Patrick Mahoney made that comment during a March meeting after a councilman discussed reopening the beach to tourists. Well, this is new information that then changes the color of the policy that has existed for the last three years. Mayor lives right behind yeah. me. Adjacent, yes. Yeah. And so when he said, I speak for the people on the south side, he wasn't he speaking wasn't, for you. He wasn't speaking for me, not at all. Longtime Chesapeake Beach resident Denise Plater said she supported the restrictions at the start of the pandemic. But after the mayor's them people comment. I'm not quite sure if they fully understand or if they actually have the knowledge to understand um, how it's perceived to the people in the community, and especially the people in the black and brown community. Census data shows Chesapeake Beach is more than 80% white, with African Americans making up less than 10% of its residents. I have family member who lives in D.C., Prince George's County, uh, St. Mary's County, and Charles. And when those family members uh, come to visit, I don't want them to feel like uh, they can't go down to the beach without having me with them. Mary Lanham's family has owned the Rod and Reel Resort for four generations. It's Chesapeake Beach's largest employer. This town was built on tourism. While born and raised here, she now lives just outside the town's limits. So you can't use the beach? No, we can't. But that's not what bothers her the most. Do you feel like this is bigger than just public access to that beach? Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you think it's about? Uh, I think it's about, uh, about leadership not wanting people to come to town. The News 4 I team emailed and called the mayor about the beach policy and those comments. When he didn't respond, we tried to ask him in person. Mayor Tracy of News 4, just wanted to ask you what you meant with your comments by them people. While the mayor wouldn't talk with us, Council Member Greg Morris did. If as elected officials we can't have these difficult discussions, Who's going to? Morris told us what we also heard from other residents who declined to go on camera, that in the past years, beach tourists would crowd their narrow streets and cause parking problems, that tourists can drive just a short distance to other beaches where they can pay for access. Plus, Brownies Beach itself is teeny tiny and located next to dangerous cliffs that have collapsed in the past. No one is allowed on those cliffs. Decisions that are made here at this town hall are open to reevaluation from time to time, as all policies should be, uh, which include previous policies that have allowed thousands of out of town visitors to mob our small beach, beach park over there. So, when we say limiting folks, and he said them people, who can you answer the question? Who are them people? What does that mean? We Anybody that lives outside the municipality. The battles and, um, and fights over beach access are about beaches, but they're about more than beaches. They're about public rights to public space. 
Andrew Carl is a UVA professor who's written books on the history of exclusion and segregation associated with our country's beaches. I found instances where towns would invoke public health concerns as a reason for excluding people of color or excluding um, poor people or excluding other groups that they saw as, as a threat. At the start of the pandemic, he wrote an op-ed in the New York Times predicting beach towns would use the public health emergency to do what Chesapeake Beach has done. When the I-team asked the town about its extension to 2025, it pointed us to its town code, charging it with maintaining public parks to promote the health, welfare, and enjoyment of the inhabitants of the town. Are we looking at a world where you, know, you have to sort of present your like, you know, local tax receipt or some sort of proof of residency to walk through a public park, to walk down sidewalks? Where does it stop? In the end, it means fewer options for Darnley and his family, who want to explore all that Maryland has to offer. But if you're kept in a box and you're not allowed to explore all of that, you may not even be aware of what's in your own backyard. Yeah, now you heard that professor asking about showing an ID in these restricted spaces. Well, on its website, the town does say guests on the beach will be required to provide a government-issued photo ID and that visitors are considered trespassers if they don't have that. The town administrator told us so far they've only issued one trespassing violation. And while the mayor would not talk to News 4 about what was going on with all of this, he did tell the Southern Maryland Chronicle that by them people, he meant tourists and fossil hunters. Fossil hunters. Yeah. Okay. There are that many of them. <laughs> Yeah. Who knew? And what did the courts have to say about all this, Tracy? Well, I can tell you that we talked with a lot of experts about this. There are folks who really focus in on what's happening with beach excess. And they said that legal experts or the legal experts who we interviewed said that Maryland doesn't have case law challenging this specific issue, but said states like Connecticut, New Jersey, and California have seen lawsuits on similar grounds. In those cases, they said the courts have generally ruled towns don't have the right to limit access mm -hmm to the public. So that means this may not be the end of this story. It may not be the end. If someone challenges it, you never know what might happen. Okay. You know. All right. Tracy, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you Tracy.